All right, I think we're ready to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone and thank you for joining today's Solar District Cup Class of 2021-2022 informational webinar. My name is Jackie Petrie from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory Solar District Cup team. Um, and before we get started, I'm going to go through a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, today we are using Zoom and you have two options for connecting to audio to listen to this presentation. Um, if you want to change your audio settings, there is a little um, mute button in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Um, there's an up arrow and you can go ahead and change your settings there if you're having issues hearing us today. Um, you can also call in by telephone by clicking that switch to phone audio button also down in that left hand corner. This is a reminder to all of our panelists to remember to mute your audio uh, when you're not presenting today so we can make sure that everyone's uh, connection is clear. And to ask a question throughout today's presentation, you can go ahead and click that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Um, you'll notice that there's both a Q&A and a chat button. We ask that you try to submit your questions through the Q&A button so we can keep track of all the questions. Um, if you have a question or comment related to a technical difficulty, you can feel free to chat the host in that chat panel, but we ask that you submit all uh, program related questions through the Q&A box. Um, we are also recording today's webinar and we'll make a recording available um, by tomorrow on our HeroX page. Lastly, if you're having any sort of technical difficulties that we can assist with, uh, the Zoom support number is on the screen uh, if you want to reach out and contact them. But again, we will be making a copy of this presentation available tomorrow. Um, with that, I am so excited to introduce Dr. Robert Megley. Uh, from the U.S. Department of Energy uh, Solar Energy Technologies Office. Uh, Dr. Megley joined in June 2020 as a technology man manager on the manufacturing and competitiveness team. And uh, Dr. Megley is um, part of the Solar District Cup team. We're very excited to have him here today to give some opening remarks. Well, thank you very much, Jackie, and welcome everyone, the class of 2021-2022. It is a very exciting opportunity. I think that the uh, overall program that you are joining and will be uh, a key adventure for you that will give you long lasting rewards in life. You're going to be learning elements of design, elements of engineering, elements of presentation and estimating and just a whole myriad of very useful skills in the solar industry, and for that matter, in other industries too. What you will take away, I'm sure, will be a good experience as well as good skills. And I do not doubt that everyone will find that this is a very rewarding experience. And I am so happy that you're all here today to learn more about this process and this program. And I wish you the very best of luck in the competition and in your future endeavors. Um, I can't think of um, a more exciting way to either uh, continue your experience in solar or get your feet wet in solar. And I gotta say that if uh, I had had the opportunity to participate in something like this, when I was a student, I certainly would have. So best of luck and thank you all very much and uh, enjoy. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, we're gonna quickly go over today's agenda just to touch on um, everything we'll be covering in today's presentation. Uh, first, we're gonna go through introductions from the Solar District Cup organizers. We'll dive into some more details about the competition and talk about participation expectations. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the competition rules, which will be published shortly. Um, we'll go into details about the divisions and district use cases and how those work. We'll then talk about the training that will be provided to you throughout the competition and a timeline of events so you can know what to expect throughout the competition. We'll talk about how to register your team on HeroX, uh, some next steps you can take to get involved, and then we'll close with a Q&A session. So with that, I would like to start introductions by handing things over to Joe Simon, who is one of the competition organizers. Joe? 
Hi, everyone. So my name is Joe Simon, and I am a competition organizer for the Solar District Cup, and I'm joined by a number of my colleagues here at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, who are very excited to work with you, should you choose to register over the coming academic year to participate successfully in the Solar District Cup. Uh, Sarah, do you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Farrar. I'm one of Thanks, Joe. Great. And we're also joined by Dr. Adol Latif. I'm not sure if he's able to say hello. I'll give him a moment. And then Jackie Petrie, who you've already met. With that, I'm excited to tell you more about the competition and why we think you should be so excited to join. So the Solar District Cup is a multidisciplinary competition that challenges student teams the design and distributed energy systems on a local electrical distribution network, a campus, across a development, or, or, or in an urban district. And so ultimately, we're asking you to think about rooftop solar, about ground mount solar, about solar carports, perhaps agrivoltaics or floating voltaics, or some of these different elements as you think about participating in this competition. We think there's a lot to learn about finance, resilience and other elements. And so in the competition on our next slide, you can see that we're asking teams to think about preparing for work in the workforce, whether this is considering solar and storage, the cost of energy, the cost of production, development, and the financial analysis necessary to make some of these developments happen. We want you to think about the flow of energy. You think about a distribution system you think about the logistics. How long does it take to build? How does it conflict with a master plan or support a master plan? How does it connect with the permits required by an authority having jurisdiction? Ultimately, teams work to solve a real world district use case with provided energy data that we're happy to give to teams so that you can all spend your time focusing on learning, focusing on innovation, and focusing on delivering your designs and presenting them to juries. Ultimately, the level of work, the level of success is tailored to fit well as an upper level undergraduate project starting in fall of 2021 and culminating in spring of 2022. But there's a lot of flexibility, which you'll hear about today, to be able to tailor it to existing classes, to a senior design project, a capstone, to have different students work from one semester to a second semester, or to connect with some of the curriculum or energy clubs that are already active at your school. So ultimately, if you're interested at all, if you've joined this webinar, I encourage you right now to go to herox.com slash solar district cup and click follow. This will make sure that you remain engaged and that we're able to connect you as we reach different deadlines and be able to remind you about registration, important updates, team success, and other elements. We'll talk through more details about how to actually register a team later in this presentation. But a first step is always to go to HeroX slash Solar District Cup and learn more. Ultimately, today we'll cover who is involved, what you'll do, why this competition, and why we think you should participate, and how and what you'll win. Ultimately, to think about who, we have a great panel. This is a great way for you to connect with industry and to showcase some of your innovations. Last year's judges represented people who focus on conceptual system design, who focus on financials, who fund projects, those who represent district use cases, and those who have distribution system impact analysis capabilities. These industry professionals give live feedback, answer questions, ask you questions, and ultimately help you become more prepared for careers in solar energy. We're excited to enable you to connect with these industry leaders through participation in the competition. But who are you? Ultimately, this is our third year of the competition. And we have 
had just about 60 teams participate each year. Last year, we had 59 teams from 57 distinct institutions across the United States. About a third of them were returning schools. Some schools had multiple teams, so this may be uh, different groups of students within a single class. It could be different clubs. It could be different campuses, but you're welcome to have multiple teams from your same school. And we saw many teams that were multidisciplinary. While some were all of the same major, some schools and some teams also were able to collaborate across disciplines. So you have someone from business, someone from marketing, someone from engineering, someone from sustainability or from urban planning that are able to connect successfully to participate in the Solid District Cup. We've had many different types of collegiate students, whether undergraduate students, graduate students, those at community colleges, those with a deep energy background, and those who are brand new to energy. We provide mentorship, guidance, resources, training, and materials so that all of these teams, wherever they're located, can compete and succeed. While many of the teams have faculty advisors, this is not required. We do think that you can succeed by committing to participate and you can learn a lot along the way. Ultimately, we'll ask all of our team to assume the role of a solar developer and to create a conceptual system design. We'll provide tools, which you'll learn about for doing rooftop solar, solar carports, ground mount and other elements will enable you to do some distribution system impact analysis, will provide resources so that you can run a financial model, and we'll ask you to consider a development plan, including a construction timeline, information about the master plan, and how to meet those campus goals. Ultimately, you'll be acting like a developer, making a pitch to a real world district use case provider on why your solution is the one that they should go forward with when trying to meet their campus or district goals. This project pitch is an opportunity for your team to learn how to tell a story, how to showcase your research, showcase your innovation, and showcase your designs. We're hosting this competition because we think it's really important to help address gaps in the industry in a need for high quality professionals. We think by you participating in this competition, you'll become the people that industry want to hire. When you go to interview, you'll be able to speak about your experience doing conceptual system design, doing financial modeling, understanding distribution system impacts, and being able to show that you did a real world project with a real world design. So whether you want to work for a utility, a developer, a bank, a financier, a startup, a manufacturer, or any other element, this type of participation can help you succeed when you look for jobs following graduation. We also think that your ideas will showcase innovative solutions that can increase adoption for distributed solar energy generation at the campus or district scale. By giving you a real world problem to solve, your solution can actually influence future RFPs or future decisions by our district use case partners. And ultimately, by connecting with so many industry professionals, whether as mentors, as judges, or just who watch your presentations, we think that you as our students can inspire industry to think strategically about district energy solutions, about solar and storage at the district scale. But what will you win? We think you'll win experience. You'll win notoriety. You'll win valuable connections to industry. We'll also give you a custom trophy and we'll make sure that your university, your team, your participation is widely understood and widely known. By designing this solar and storage system for an assigned campus or district, you'll be able to showcase the future of solar and storage at a campus or district scale. To talk a little bit more about participant expectations, who participates, when to engage, et cetera, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Sarah. Sarah? Thank you, Joe. Again, my name is Sarah Farrar. I'm one of the co-organizers of the U.S. Department of Energy Solar District Cup Collegiate Design Competition uh, from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or NREL. Uh, we'd like to do a little deeper dive now in this informational webinar to explain the eligibility of who participates, a timeline of when to engage, 
a little bit more about why you might be motivated to participate and some of the particulars about how you compete. Next slide. So for eligibility, a solar district cup team is required to be composed of at least three students. The team students must be enrolled in accredited US-based collegiate institutions. All uh, students on solar district cup teams must be enrolled with at least one class and pursuing a degree. Any level of college student is welcome. The challenge is designed for an upper level undergraduate level of knowledge. Uh, um, uh, underclassmen, graduate students, community college students, uh, uh, technical or associate's degree students are also welcome to the competition. We highly encourage multidisciplinary team members. These may be uh, students from mechanical, civil, or electrical engineering programs, other engineering programs, urban planning, communications and marketing, business or finance, construction management, sustainability or environmental policy or architecture or other uh, degrees. Having uh, a diverse knowledge base across the topics of the Solar District Cup will contribute to your success as a team. We also strongly recommend a faculty advisor or an uh, industry mentor within or external to your collegiate campus. And while this is strongly recommended, it is not required. Next slide. A little bit more about uh, the benefits of participating and why you might be motivated to do so. As Joe explained earlier, through this competition, you can build experience with innovative, renewable, clean, and solar energy design. We will provide you the structure to develop real world solutions that shape the future of solar energy. You'll have an opportunity to network with industry members for career connections. And this is an opportunity for experiential learning. So hands-on experience uh, to build your resume. Your participation in the class might be as part of a senior designer capstone project, perhaps for elective or independent study course credit, the competition might be part of an existing class curriculum or maybe even supporting a thesis topic. It could be a seminar topic. It could be part of a student interest club or otherwise an extracurricular activity. If you're joining our informational webinar today as a faculty advisor, we think you might uh, benefit by advising students with this competition that provides your students real data and a use case for that student experiential learning. We provide curriculum support with online training modules and introductions to modeling tools. This gives the students a chance to do a team-based design and analysis project, and also gives them connections to industry. We have uh, one faculty who gave us a testimonial that the competition gave their class much more structure, realism, and excitement. They found it a godsend. They found that this competition was one of four projects in their capstone course that they were advising, and they saw students develop skills that they might not have otherwise had that transferred to other projects that the students were working on. Next slide. The seminal document of the Solar District Cup are the competition rules. Uh, last year's rules are available today for your review in the resources section of the HeroX.com platform for the Solar District Cup. You can anticipate that the revised class of 2021 to 2022 rules will be published by the end of the month, by August 31, 2021. Uh, there are some uh, minor uh, updates and evolutions compared to last year's rules. Uh, but the structure of the competition is largely the same. Next slide. I would now like to introduce Travis Lauder, one of the co-organizers of the Solar District Cup at NRO. Travis? Thank you, Sarah. Uh, so we've got uh, some preliminary uh, Use cases, your uh, the, the competition areas you'll be working on uh, for the 21-22 uh, uh, Solar District Cup. 
Uh, we've got those partnerships in discussion right now, and we're excited to uh, discuss or introduce a little, uh, give you sort of a teaser of what they'll be uh, for the coming year. So if you can go to the next slide, Joe. Uh, first of all, quick uh, note on structure. So uh, in the past, we've run the Solar District Cup with three divisions. Um, we are in discussion with uh, additional use cases this year, so it's possible we could have an additional division. Um, but uh, generally, the structure is that uh, each division is centered around a use case, which is a real-world district. Um, as Joe mentioned earlier in the uh, in the webinar, districts are um, either a campus or an urban corridor or something similar, a collection of buildings, basically, that's fed by one or two um, distribution feeders. Um, the winner of each division, or you compete uh, in this in this division um, against other teams, and then the winner of each division uh, is selected by a panel of industry judges at the uh, competition event in uh, the spring, and then uh, the three first place winners of each division go on to compete for a pitch winner, uh, where you essentially um, you get a, a limited amount of time to uh, present your uh, project your your solution to uh, a group of um, uh, it's a it's a broader group than just the judges. It's kind of like a an industry choice award. So um, the uh, the pitch winner of the competition is sort of the grand prize winner of the uh, of the competition entire. So next slide, please. So again, just this uh, this teaser real quick. These these three districts that we've got here were from last year. The uh, um, Top left corner there is uh, a Denver use case. It, it included both the uh, Raria campus, which uh, hosts three uh, uh, collegiate institutions on the left there, and then um, the Denver Performing Arts Complex on the right. The center bubble there is the University of Nebraska Lincoln, and we included a um, an agrivoltaic challenge in that one as well. Um, in addition to the the rooftops and parking areas you see in that central. Um, district. And then uh, the bottom left there is the University of Central Florida, um, which included, in addition to that central district, a, um, a ground mount uh, challenge and a, uh, a floating solar challenge as well. So for the 21-22 Solar District Cup, uh, we are currently in discussions with, again, these are not finalized, but these discussions are uh, sort of in advanced state. We're in discussions with the National Lab, uh, a sister institution to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Um, that will focus uh, on resilience for the most part. So it'll be a strong battery use case. Uh, the next uh, district we are in discussions with is a university. It's got a, um, a medical and veterinary uh, infrastructure that uh, will also uh, have a resilience component to it. Um, and then the third where we're in advanced discussions is a museum and park district campus, which includes um, uh, several uh, uh, institutions and facilities that uh, you'd associate with um, museums and art districts, et cetera. So uh, we're excited to uh, bring these to the light as we sort of uh, get to the finish line with these discussions and uh, give you some more details um, in the coming weeks here. Next slide, please. Uh, real quickly, uh, when you compete in the Solar District Cup, you will receive, upon the launch of the competition, one of these district use case profiles. This is a, a effectively your challenge document. Um, this document will be sent to you directly and will also be available in a secure data room um, that we will set up and you will get login credentials for that. Um, the challenge document effectively tells you a little bit about the district, some of the district goals, um, and then it outlines the challenge areas and some of the the, the, um, the steps you'll need to take and tasks you'll need to perform. And then it includes uh, data that you will uh, you will need to access in order to complete the challenge. Um, the document itself contains a bit of data, but um, otherwise there will be more data available in the online data room. This is, includes things like the uh, load profiles and uh, master plans, et cetera. Um, and the, uh, the Google Earth uh, KMZ. So uh, make sure that if, when you will be competing in this competition, please have that program downloaded as you will be probably using a good bit of it in your, uh, in your work. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, Joe, I think I'm gonna hand this one back to you for discussion of the training materials. Yes, and thanks, Travis. And so when you participate in the Solar District Cup, we're committed to providing you all of the information, resources, tools, and related collateral necessary so that every team can compete successfully. 
Every team can be across the finish line and every team can learn what's necessary to present a complete solar plus storage design for your assigned district use case. And so completely free of charge from the Solar District Hub organizers and through our partnerships, we're excited to provide customized training, exclusive access, and other resources to your team. In terms of customized training, we use a platform called HeatSpring to host a number of very specific training webinars that are hosted by industry experts to talk about things like how to approach conceptual system design. We give context like how the National Renewable Energy Laboratory con complex was able to do rooftop solar storage and other elements. We have experts talk about distribution system impact analysis. We have experts that talk to you about creating a financial model, how to go through development planning. How do you consider floodplains? How do you consider your local authority having jurisdiction? We provide pre and post knowledge check opportunities and you get free access to the HeatSpring Solar Executive MBA contact. A course that's typically just about $2,000 per person to take this course. We're excited to provide to every student who's able to participate in the Solar District Cup. Throughout the academic year, we'll connect you with industry experts who will be available to answer questions, whether it's about career opportunity or the competition itself. And we'll also give you resources from last year's competition. So that you'll be able to see what other teams have done do use it as a case study and learn from their past participation and success. In addition, we also are excited to provide free access to tools. We're able to show you on our next slide, access to things like Aurora Solar. Aurora Solar is a conceptual system design platform available online where you can model rooftops, choose different panels, identify the stringing and other important elements to do conceptual system design in a really intuitive and engaging way. We're also excited with a new partner this year to be able to provide access to Energy Toolbase for helping you model solar and storage customer savings analysis. Through the Solar Executive MBA HeatSpring content, we're also able to give you access to what would typically be a proprietary financial model. We'll provide training and resources to tools like the System Advisor model and React Lite, and we'll also be able to provide all faculty and student access to conferences like Solar Power International and regional solar power events free of charge. Through all of these resources, the customized training, the tools, and all of these different elements, whether your school, your faculty, or your students have a deep knowledge of solar energy or energy at all, or you're coming into this with a passion, but not much base information, we're going to provide the information you need to succeed. So we're really excited to make this freely available to all teams who register in the Solar District Cup. But when do you do all these activities? I'm happy to talk very briefly about the timeline of events. Recognize though, that this is designed to fit within the academic calendar. We're hosting this informational webinar now, and the recording will be available for you, your colleagues, your faculty, or other students to review in the coming weeks with registration closing in September. Ultimately, we see that you can participate as part of a course or courses, senior or design capstone projects, or as an extracurricular activity, as Sarah previously mentioned. To walk through that timeline, what you can see is that today is August 18th. We'll close team registration on September 16th, and we'll announce all of our participating teams on September 23rd. When you register is when we'll make sure that you have full access to all of the information, such as some of these training resources, access to tools, and access to the full set of rules and other elements. We'll also have a virtual warm-up workshop in the end of September. You're welcome to begin work before that date, but we will have an extensive virtual warm-up workshop webinar to talk through all of the expectations and to talk through the exact steps that you'll need to take to be a successful team. Ultimately, you'll submit a solar only progress deliverable in late November. This you'll receive written feedback on, and for all teams who meet the minimum qualifications of the rules, you'll be chosen as a finalist. You are not competing against each other, but ultimately we're excited for all teams who do the work in this fall and early winter to be identified as finalists 
so that we know how many judges to identify, how many divisions to secure, and how we set up our final presentation schedule. But ultimately, we'll have another finalist team huddle webinar in January. You'll work throughout the spring semester and present in April. By presenting in April, industry judges, again, virtually, will be able to have you showcase your innovations, showcase your ideas, ask questions, receive feedback, and ultimately will identify a first, second, and third place team for each division in this process. So in terms of when to engage, right now, again, is August 18th, and we'll publish the book by the end of the month. You'll be able to work throughout the fall. You'll be able to present in the spring. And in partnership with Solar Power Events, we look forward to determining alignment with a possible conference for that final pitch championship where the three first place teams are able to present to industry. But for our final competition event, this will take place on Sunday, April 24th, with winners announced on Monday, April 25th. We're really excited about this balance of participation that allows you to connect with industry while engaging from your own universities and fitting within the academic calendar. If you're intrigued, I encourage you, as I did earlier, to go to herox.com slash solar district cup and click follow so we'll keep you up to date as shown on the next slide. HeroX is the platform that we use to host the rule, host the timeline, communicate with your team. This is where you can form a team. Someone can be listed as a team captain, someone can submit your registration entry, and you'll ultimately submit your progress and final deliverable package element. This platform, free to register, is used as a central repository of all the information, resources, and capabilities you'll need to be able to engage with the Solar District Cap community. So if you haven't already, please go to herox.com slash solar district cap and click follow. This does not necessarily register you as a team. We'll talk about what that means later, but just clicking follow means that you'll be on our distribution list so that we can remind you of deadlines and share important information as we go through this participation. But if you're more than intrigued, then you should register a team. And how do you do so? Similarly, you go to herox slash solar district cup and then you click solve this challenge. Again, this is a bit of a minor step, but it shows that you're committed to solving this challenge, but it doesn't yet tell us exactly what school you're with, what team you're forming, or who your other teammates are going to be. But by clicking solve this challenge, you'll form a HeroX account, agree to their general terms that say you're going to follow the rules of the competition and indicate whether or not you want to compete as a team. Recognize that none of these choices actually are set in stone. You can create a team later, you can add team members, join a different team, but ultimately form one team. From there, you'll choose begin entry for the registration challenge on the next slide. You'll be able to say begin entry, and then there'll be just a few questions that say, what school are you with? What type of majors do you expect to participate? And a few other demographic information as we look to identify the spread and reach of this competition. Recognize that multiple teams from a single school may submit a register entry, but only one team may compete per division. We are expecting three or four divisions, which means if you have a class of 20 students and you want to break them into four different teams or three different teams, you could have four teams of five that each work on a distinct division, or you could all work together. If you have two different classes over the semester, one could do the solar only design in the fall and a different team could present their solar plus storage solution in the spring. But ultimately, there's a lot of opportunity for participation in this competition. So you'll go through this begin entry process. On the next slide, you can see a little bit of what this will look like. This will be different if you're on a desktop versus a mobile device, but we'll ask for a title, a short description, information about your collegiate institution. You can give yourself a team name so that we know you may have two different teams from your same school and a little bit about whether you're a student team lead, a faculty advisor, and how you'd like us to communicate with you outside of the HeroX platform. Again, it's completely free to register and we do encourage you to do so so that you can stay in the loop as we close registration, provide updates, provide training, access to the free tools and all of this other information. 
In terms of team members, we mentioned there's a minimum of three, and there is no stated maximum. However, there is a limit to the maximum number of students who can present to judges. So during the 15-minute presentation in April, we say no more than five students can present during that presentation slot, and an additional five students could participate in the Q&A. So while your team may have more than 10 students, we do find that there's some practicality limits for the number of minutes available in which you're able to connect with those judges in a meaningful way. In the past, the average team size has been about eight, but it can be, again, as few as three, or it can be an entire class if desired. It really just depends on your student team participation. With that, I'll turn it over to Sarah to talk a little bit about what's next and how to engage. Sarah? Thank you, Joe. Uh, if we could uh, please be on slide 47. Um, we want to give you a few more reminders to plan ahead. So when to engage in our summary timeline for the class of 2021 to 2022. As we've mentioned previously, we expect the rules to be published no later than August 31st. You should become familiar with the additional details of the competition structure and the progress and final deliverable requirements, as well as the judging statements for evaluation that we provide in those rules. Your deadline to complete the Hero X registration submit process is by 5 p.m. Eastern time on September 16th. A week later, by September 23rd, we will be announcing the participating teams, their affiliated US-based collegiate institutions, and we will also be informing you of your assigned division district use case. A week after that, on September 30th, we will be conducting a virtual warm-up workshop in webinar format uh, to um, provide a deep dive of the rules and a few other tips on how to effectively compete in the Solar District Cup. Next slide. Uh, a reminder that uh, after registration and before teams are announced for those academic semester uh, schedules that may already be underway, be reading the rules. You can get a feel of what it uh, looks and sounds like to present to judges by watching a select number of recordings of the 15 minute pro project presentations from the class of 2021. We'll give you a link of, uh, to these presentations that are uh, available in NREL's learning channel on our YouTube link. You can also, uh, starting August 31st, begin the heat spring learning modules. Maybe check in with a few of those pre-knowledge checks and uh, begin with uh, some of the overview uh, uh, content that we have made available. Uh, note that we will uh, ask for at least three students to show that they have completed the uh, minimum required training modules in HeatSpring as part of the final deliverable submittal. Uh, but there are about six months uh, to complete those learning modules, as well as a number of optional learning modules that can inform your student team's effort. Also be building that team. So uh, recruiting uh, multidisciplinary team members, or perhaps be thinking about what the multidisciplinary assignments or delegation would be from one team member to another uh, amidst your recruited team. Uh, be identifying an optional faculty advisor or finding uh, industry mentors outside of your collegiate institution to assist and guide your efforts. Next slide. As we mentioned, we'll conduct a warm-up workshop webinar format on September 30th of 2021. In this workshop, we will do that deep dive of the rules with a webinar presentation. We will discuss the details of each of the assigned district use cases. We'll give you a chance to introduce yourselves to each other as the class of 2022 participating team. We'll give you some fun uh, top 10 tips to think about how to best organize your team's effort for success. 
and have some guest speakers to provide you uh, some uh, career uh, choice uh, inspiration. We expect this to be about a three hour length with more details to come as we will announce via the HeroX platform. Also, we will be inviting you to attend the Solar Power International Conference and Trade Show as part of uh, North America Smart Energy Week. Uh, note that we have a date correction. So this is uh, coming up in a month, the week of September 20th, from September 20th to September 23rd. And upon your registration as a team, in HeroX, we will provide you additional details of how you can have free access uh, to the digital or virtual components of this um, big annual industry trade show and exposition. Next slide. Uh, just to keep your eyes uh, going, uh, looking forward uh, for how you should be preparing your team, you will have a progress deliverable package due November 18th of 2021. In this package, we will ask you to uh, do a design of proposed solar systems for your assigned district use case. This progress deliverable package will include an executive project summary, a conceptual system design, a preliminary distribution system impact analysis, your preliminary financial analysis, as well as a preliminary development plan. So all five of these components are expected in your progress deliverable package due just before the typical Thanksgiving holiday break by 5 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, November 18th. We'll compare that to what you submit next in April. In the next slide, you'll see that the final deliverable package will include solar systems plus battery energy storage systems. The final deliverable package has five components. Your project proposal, which is a, a summary of the conceptual system design, the distribution system impact analysis, the financial analysis, and the corresponding development plan. You'll also submit, as part of your project proposal, your pitch, pitch presentations that you will uh, give in a follow-up competition event to the industry judges. To help set your expectations, uh, the final competition dates are Sunday and Monday, April 24th to 25th of 2022. You um, uh, will uh, be able to see each other's presentations to the judges so you can watch your fellow competitors or fellow teams in the other uh, parallel scheduled divisions. Um, we uh, expect to be able to announce in January what we anticipate the schedule to be for the Project Pitch Championship presentations. Uh, so as Travis and Joe noted earlier, uh, we will be gathering uh, uh, an audience of industry members to see the first place division teams go head to head in this project pitch championship. Given the somewhat uh, fluid nature of uh, the worldwide pandemic, uh, we are not yet announcing what that project pitch championship format or dates will be. So these are to be determined, but will likely be in the first half of May of 2022. Next slide. Okay, so why compete? There's no risk to you, there's no cost to enter, and there's a high reward of experiential learning and building your resumes for careers in the clean energy industry. Uh, travel is not required to compete in the divisions in April. Lots of training is uh, provided as you elect to spend the time to avail yourself of those training modules and resources and opportunities to make connections to industry through our partner conferences, through industry mentors, and through our industry judges. Next slide. So to recap, we encourage you to go to herox.com slash solar district cup and choose to follow the competition now. Uh, be thinking about recruiting your fellow student team members an optional faculty advisor, and additional mentors for your team. 
Remember the deadline to fully register your team in the HeroX platform is by 5 p.m. Eastern time on September 16th. You should be reading the rules to be planning your uh, time and collaborations amongst your multidisciplinary team for best participation. Starting at the end of the month, you can uh, learn from the training resources and modules that we provide to you, and you can get started designing your solutions. A reminder that you may um, replay or share a link to the recording of this webinar with prospective team members, faculty advisors, or industry mentors. We will have that link posted to HeroX no later than tomorrow, August 19th. And in closing in the formal part of this informational webinar today, we would like to thank our sponsor partners, the Aurora Solar Conceptual System uh, Solar Modeling Software, the HeatSpring Learning Management System, and Solar Power Events for our participation in their annual Solar Power International Conference and related regional conference and expo events. We expect to be adding additional sponsor partners to the Solar District Cup and are excited to share those partners with you at our next gathering, the warm-up workshop on September 30th. I would like to turn our facilitation back to my colleague, Jackie Petrie, to answer questions that you may have. Uh, so we have about 10 minutes remaining in our scheduled informational webinar uh, time here. We encourage you to use the Q&A or question and answer pane or feature of the Zoom interface uh, to type your questions for us to answer live as many as we can in the time remaining. Jackie? Thanks, Sarah. Um, we can go ahead and get started, but thanks again for reminding everyone that they can submit questions through that Q&A um, feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, so going ahead and diving into the questions, we have one person ask um, if the PowerPoint slides will be made available afterward in addition to the recording. Yes, we can definitely create a version of these PowerPoint slides. We will post them as a resource on HeroX.com slash Solar District Cup, where the link then can be viewed by anyone, regardless of whether or not they've chosen to follow or join the competition. And when we send a follow-up message to all of the registrants of this webinar, we're happy to include a link to that resource rather than attach it to the email, which might get too large. But yeah, we're happy to provide it. Thanks. Is there an upper limit to the number of participants that can be on one team? There is not. As briefly mentioned, the average team size is typically eight from the registrations that we've seen in the past. The minimum is three students who are participating. And we've seen some teams that have been in the dozen or few dozen scale, but generally from the rules point of view for presentations to judges, we limit the participation to five active speakers during the presentation period with an additional five students able to join for the question and answer session. So if you have a team that is greater than 10 people, you'll have to prioritize who is taking some of those speaking slots. Ultimately though, we can also remind you that if you have a larger number of people involved or interested, you can also consider having multiple teams from your collegiate institution where each team would work on a different district use case profile. Thanks, Joe. Similarly, is there a limit to how many teams can compete in the competition overall? So there's, there's not a limit. So ultimately you can see where in the last cycle we had 59 teams, which then were distributed into three district use case divisions of about 20 teams each. We have some natural attrition over the course of the academic year. And in the last cycle, we had about a dozen or a little less than a dozen teams present to judges for each district use case division. 
We continue to try to support additional teams. And so you also heard us speaking about the possibility of having four district use cases as well. And we will make sure that we scale the competition with the number of judges, with the number of support, mentors, and other resources so that we can support fairly and effectively whatever number of teams register and successfully completes participation in the competition. Ultimately, as organizers, we don't have an upper limit. We're here to reach as many students, as many faculty, and as many collegiate institutions as we can. And so should we have great interest, we will support you all in getting across that finish line and learning about the solar plus storage industry. All right, next question asks, if a team is not a finalist in December, is the competition over for them? Generally, yes. So the way the rules are written, however, it's important to recognize that a team is not competing against other teams to begin a finalist, but rather we're more or less checking to see if you did your homework. We want to see that you've done sufficient progress, done sufficient work to continue in the competition so that when we identify and secure industry experts to commit as industry judges, that they're going to review submissions that have been given sufficient amount of effort, time, and respect in their participation. So as long as you read the rules, make progress on your design, and meet the requirements of the submission for the progress deliverable, you will become a finalist. So you can plan on success because we're not saying, is this design the best design? We're not saying, is this design better than the other competing teams? It really is, did you do what was asked? If so, you will be identified as a finalist team. Okay, is there a suggested number of weekly hours teams should spend on their project? That is a great question and not one that we've asked our prior teams. What we have found though, is that teams that are the most successful do have a plan for success. So they do consider when are we going to evaluate the available rooftops, ground lot areas and carport or parking lot areas and prioritize what we're going to design. How are we going to make progress on our conceptual system design? How are we going to understand our financial model? And so while we haven't asked teams, we have heard from past competitors that it does fit well within their academic structure. So it's not that it's all encompassing and takes away some of their success in other classes, but that it does work well in something that may be fit as a senior design project, a capstone, an extracurricular activity, or perhaps part of a few credit hour optional or elective type course. And so we have heard success of teams participating, but we have not asked them how many hours on average have you spent working on the project. Great. Um, next question asks, how can I find out if my school hosted a team in the past and if they did who the faculty advisor was? Sure. Energy.gov slash solar district cup. You can look up class of 2020 and class of 2021 to see the full list of participating finalists and winning institutions. And if you do see your school on there and would like to know who the faculty advisor was, the best way is probably just to email solar district cup at mrl.gov. Um, can teams elect to use other software uh, on the project that isn't provided through the competition? Absolutely. So we provide software as a resource that you're welcome to use if desired. But if you want to use a different conceptual system design platform like Helioscope, a different financial model, a different approach to customer savings analysis, please do so. Please use the resources that are available to you as a team. We're not requiring any specific tool. These are available as a possible resource to help all teams succeed. Okay. Can teams include students from multiple universities? Absolutely. So we do encourage you to think carefully about communications and responsibilities, but yes, you can have multi-institution teams and we have seen that happen in the past. And I would add uh, that we ask to indicate that in your uh, HeroX um, team registration that your a planned team makeup would identify multiple universities. So you are absolutely welcome to have students 
uh, with uh, cross university teams, uh, but helpful for us if you would identify that in those HeroX registration team prompts. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so next question asks, are uh, the districts pre-selected and assigned or can teams propose um, their own uh, campus as a district use case? Generally, the I guess not generally, the districts are pre-selected and assigned. The reason we do that is that it's a great deal of effort to collect all of the 15 minute energy data information about the distribution system layout and to give a fair set of constraints for the judges to evaluate. We have seen teams do two solutions in parallel. One, consider their own campus and two, participate in the Solar District Cup with the assigned district use case. There's a lot to learn and we've seen teams leverage their participation in the Solar District Cup to create a better solution for their own campus. But ultimately, you will need to create a design solution for your assigned district use case. If you think your campus should be a district use case partner in the future, email us at solodistrictcup at enrol.gov. All right, and can you just remind us when those district use cases will be um, announced and assigned? So we will make them assigned and announced by the time we announce the student teams on September 23rd at the latest. But as we secure those and are able to make them assigned upon team registration, we'll do our best to provide that information as well. We have really great conversations and commitments. We're securing, as I mentioned, all of that important data so that you can focus on solutions and not on data collection. We're doing all that hard work for you. All right, and I'm just gonna ask one last question to wrap things up. Um, is there a limit to how many faculty advisors can be um, on a team? No, uh, use all of the resources that you have available to you. So go ask faculty, go ask industry, find a local installer and get all the advice that you can. We encourage you to engage and grow your team and increase your chances of success. Great, thanks, Joe. Um, and I apologize if we didn't get to everyone's questions. Um, we are out of time, but I do encourage you if you have further questions to reach out to solardistrictcup at nrel.gov to submit those questions. Joe, do you have any final remarks? We're really excited for all of your interest. We had just about 60 unique collegiate institutions represented on the registration for this early informational webinar. It's just the middle of August. And so we really look forward to seeing all of the teams register. Hope you learn from each other. Hope you learn from your industry mentors. Hope you learn from your participation. And we're so excited to be able to bring these capabilities of solar plus storage at the campus or district scale to you and your collegiate institution completely free of charge. So we hope you'll register a team and reach out to Solar District Cup at nrel.gov with any questions that you have. We're here to support your team and your success. Thanks, everyone.